Hey guys, it's Jeff, and today I just got my Rad Rover from Rad Power Bikes. So we're now outside. First thing I'm gonna do is take off these brakes. So it's been one year. So today we are doing a brake install on the Rad Rover. Been able to procure from my local bike shop these very nice SRAM four piston guide tees. Brakes like crazy. Hey guys, it's Jeff and welcome to today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this little montage of my 2019 Rad Rover up to this point. Now the title is no clickbait. If you look behind me, we are in the shed. The Rad Rover is gone and in its place is this brand new e-mountain bike. So in today's video, I figured what I would do is sort of talk about why I got into the Rad Rover into the first place, then kind of explain what changed and why I decided to get rid of it. And ultimately what pushed me into getting this specific e-mountain bike right behind me. So without further ado guys, here we go. Back in the spring of 2019, I was getting really heavy, really out of shape. I was really concerned about my health and I decided it was time to make a change. I decided I needed to start exercising and just live a more healthy lifestyle. Unfortunately, being fairly fat and being fairly out of shape meant that it was very hard for me to get into an activity that I would actually enjoy. Running was out of the question because I'm way too heavy for my knees to support me without injury and I can't really run that far. Biking a regular bike was kind of okay, but at the same time being so out of shape, I really couldn't go that far and it was really demoralizing motivating for me to do it. So ultimately, after a little bit of research, I decided I would try the e-bike. And what's great about e-bikes, and I've talked about this in a few videos, but really it's just that it gives you the opportunity to get in shape, pedal as much as you can, and then use the electric power to sort of get you the rest of the way and be able to enjoy rides with friends and just go further, have more fun, explore more without always being concerned about will I be able to get back home. So for me, this was a huge game changer. And the reason why I decided to go with the Rad Rover in the first place was because it was a fairly inexpensive bike at 2000 dollars I figured it's not that big of a dent in my budget and I also figured that if I didn't like it for whatever reason I could always sell it for most of the money that I paid for it so it wouldn't end up being a huge financial burden on me and it had some pretty good reviews online I'd seen a couple of videos it seemed to be fairly well endorsed by a few youtubers and I decided you know what I'm just gonna pull the trigger and go ahead with a rad rover and that ended up being the best decision of my life after I got into rad rover I got super into biking the electric motor allowed me to go further and faster than I ever imagined possible and it gave me more more confidence to try things that I wouldn't ever tried before just go to places that I never really would have went before and I started commuting with a bike and it was just a totally new experience for me and I was really really happy about that so I did a couple thousand kilometers with a bike on there and then I started to evolve a little bit and I started to see some of the limitations of the bike because of course the Rad Rover being an inexpensive e-bike it definitely has some faults I mentioned some of the issues I had with the brakes I mentioned the issues I had with the gearing as well and things like that and so I started pouring a little bit of money into it changing the brakes not changing the free wheel upgrading the tires and things like that but at the end of the day it remains a fairly cheap bike and I was getting to a point where my personal evolution was taking me more into mountain biking I realized when I got the Rover that it was a very good all-around bike it's pretty good you know in the trail it's pretty good on gravel it's pretty good on the streets and it can get you pretty much anywhere but it's not the best at any of those things and I think that's what's really great about the Rad Rover it's it's a really good gateway into biking and once you get into that gateway then you can sort of learn for yourself what you enjoy doing best and then if you're going to upgrade the bike because you feel like you've reached its maximum potential then you know exactly what you're getting into and you can choose the bike that really fits your requirement best because now you really know what you want to do and that's what ended up happening with me so as I was writing more I realized that I didn't really like going around on the streets too much also with COVID I ended up not going to work anymore so I'm doing a lot less commuting and I realized that the things that I really like to do was more going on trails and, and exploring some of the places that are harder to reach and that require a little more technical skill and uh, a little more finesse and things like that and for the type of terrain that I ended up liking riding 
the most. I realized that the fat bike with its gearing and the rear hub motor and just the way it was built in general, not really of a high enough quality to survive going down some more technical trails. Uh, I realized this bike really wasn't gonna cut it for what I wanted to do. And so I decided I want to get more into mountain biking because ultimately that's really the kind of biking I wanted to do. Another thing that has influenced me into this direction also is that I have a couple friends who have moved into town here that weren't here before when I was riding on the Rad Rover. And they're really more mountain bikers than, you know, commuters and city bikers. And so they're really influencing me into trying some new trails and going to other places. So if these new friends around that I can ride a whole lot more with, I started doing more and more trails and the bike just wasn't keeping up. The gearing wasn't up to speed. And the motor configuration being in the back wheel and not being able to multiply your power in the crank like the mid-drive can, it really wasn't cutting it. And so at the end of the day, I decided that I wanted to upgrade to a full e-mountain bike. And uh, yeah, I did try to purchase an e-mountain bike earlier in the season. Unfortunately, everything was sold out. The logistics of getting a bike right now is kind of complicated. And I'd kind of given up on that and decided I would just stick to the Rover for one final season and change it next year with a 2022 model. About a month ago, I got an email from one of my friends also shopping for a bike like this. It called a place that I never heard of in Montreal that had some bikes in stock. And he mentioned that one of the models that I was looking for, the Giant Trans XE Plus Pro 3, uh, was in stock for him in small, but and that he was going to purchase that bike. But he also mentioned to me, by the way, they have a Pro 1 in stock in large. I need a large frame. So he thought about me. He said, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but I think you might be interested in it. So I ended up calling the shop and I found that they had this large giant Trans E Plus Pro 1 in stock, which was a little bit more expensive than I wanted to pay for a bike. But at the end of the day, the three was completely sold out everywhere. And I spoke with a salesperson. And of course, the salesperson was going to say that, but he mentioned that the suspension on the Pro 1 were quite a little bit better and that for a guy my weight, that would probably work a lot better than the Pro 3. I did a little bit of research on that and it actually makes sense. The weight limit on these are a little higher and I've been super happy with it. I've had it for about two weeks now. I've ridden it, I'd say about three or 400 kilometers and it's been really, really great. So I'm not gonna be talking too much about this bike in today's video because I figured I'll make a more dedicated video on the Giant once I get a little more riding into it and I can do a proper review, kind of like what I did for the Rad Rover. But uh, one thing I wanted to talk a little bit about before I close the video is just the differences that I found in the riding style and how it is to ride something like this versus a Rad Rover. So one thing that I really liked about the Rad Rover when I was starting out is that you had the throttle actuation that you could use. That ended up being a crutch, but also a super helpful thing. It allows you to pedal for a while, get up a hill, and then once you're on top, instead of stopping and catching your breath, you can just use a throttle and catch your breath that way. I ended up using that a little bit too much, to be honest, and I really used that as a crutch instead of pushing myself to progress some more. And with the mid-drive, you can't really do that. The mid-drive, the motor is in the middle. It pushes the crank, so you have to pedal at all time to get any power into the wheel. What that does in return, however, gives you the power through the crank, through the chain, and it multiplies your power through the derailleur. So it's really a trade-off. But I'm super happy that I started with the Rad Rover because when I originally started, if I had something like this, I really would have been able to get anywhere by always pedaling. I would have been out of breath all the time, would have had to stop anyway, just like on the push bike. So now with my cardio being a lot better, thanks to the Rad Rover, I can actually pedal this for kilometers on end without stopping. And the electric power just give me more power to get up steeper hills and more technical terrain. So it's really been a good trade off, but I'm really happy about it. So anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you're looking forward to more content with a giant. You probably expect some kind of drone video, some kind of adventure video coming with it very, very soon. And with that said, guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you Sunday for my next music video. All right, peace.